So growing up, I was always a PC guy because a Mac was worth more than my life, but it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles to pursue filmmaking where they were like, you basically can't use Premiere anymore because that's not legit. If you wanna take this seriously, you have to learn either Final Cut or Avid. And Avid is for the high end major studios and you're not that legit. So just do Final Cut Pro, but Final Cut Pro only runs on Mac, so must buy a Mac. So I made the switch from Premiere on a PC to Final Cut on a Mac and I ran with that for a long time. And I loved Final Cut. I got really, really good with it, but Premiere slowly started to catch up and come up with some stuff that was really cool, especially when people started shooting on DSLRs like the Canon T2i. Because with Final Cut, I remember always having to render all my H.264 files into ProRes and importing that and editing that with massive files. But Premiere eventually was able to edit those files natively. So that's when I really started to look back into Premiere. Some of you might not even know what I'm talking about, but you know how you can shoot a clip on a mirrorless camera or DSLR and you can just drag and drop that onto a timeline and start editing it right away? The, like, that is awesome. Well, I'm starting to feel like one of those people that's like, back in my day, you know, we had pagers. What the hell is a pager? But there used to be so many major differences on what each software was capable of. But now I feel like it's kind of gotten to the point where all editing software is reasonably powerful and can probably do everything I need it to do. So I think the biggest reason I'm using Adobe Premiere is because a majority of the production houses and agencies I work with are also on Premiere. So that makes it really convenient for me to bounce projects back and forth between multiple people. I'll start editing a video and then Sam will take over for a bit and then Steve will do some touch-ups to it and come back to me. Like we can all work on it together very seamless. I feel like if I were to switch out of Premiere, I'd be kind of that odd one out, kind of like when you have a group chat going with a bunch of iPhone users and that one person has the green bubble, you're like, no! Or people that use Square Cash instead of Venmo. Like everybody uses Venmo, so just use Venmo, but they're like, oh no, Square Cash is better because of this and that. And why is Venmo sharing this private information? Mean, just, just use Venmo, everybody has it. With Avid, Premiere, and DaVinci all being software that you can run on on both PC or Macs, there really isn't that hard limitation that there used to be. And things are getting really cross compatible. So I ran a little poll on Instagram, 64% of you edit on PC. And here's what you guys had to say about your computers. I'm team PC. One, you get more bang for your buck. Two, that money that you save from not buying a Mac, you can use to buy more camera equipment. Three, gaming, just a better gaming system all around. I prefer editing on PC because that's what I grew up using and PC has just been more intuitive for me to use. It was significantly cheaper to get started with a PC than it was with a Mac. My next reason is how upgradable it is. I have five terabytes of storage inside of my computer now. Been a PC user my whole life, but now I'm starting to see that Mac has the nicer body and just design. So I actually bought a PC that copied all of Mac specs. I had it on a MacBook Pro, but literally the only reason for that is I started out in iMovie. So when I transitioned to Final Cut, everything just made sense. I choose Mac because it's fast, reliable, and has great software. I edit on Premiere Pro on a Mac Mini because it was on sale at the refurb section on the Apple Store. And you gotta have the big monitor so you could always be watching TV while you work right here. Now me personally, most of my day in, day out, or some light editing takes place on this MacBook Pro, but all my heavier stuff has been going onto this Asus Windows machine. The performance you get for the price is so good and it's also flexible and a lot of them are upgradable. And Apple is just great at making things very simple and stable. And there's just so much going on in the Mac OS that I love, like AirDrop or iMessage. Full disclosure, I don't know that much about computers, all right? So when I look through a spec sheet of a computer, I'm like, don't know what that is, don't know what that is, don't know what that is. All I care about is how smooth my editing process is. Turning on the computer, opening up Premiere, editing, rendering, shut down. And I'll take any computer that can do that as smooth as possible. And I really started to see a need for some high powered computers when I started shooting on higher end cameras like that red or even this little basic camera shoots in 6k raw there's camera shooting 8k or more just to put things into perspective remember when full hd was all new 1080p if you could edit that you were a god 8k is basically 16 times more pixels than 1080p each frame is like 33 megapixels i could edit full hd all day on this thing but 4k starts to get a little rocky depending on what codec i'm using and 6k and 8k like no thanks 
So I started looking at some of the more powerful options in the Mac world. It's like, nope, can't afford that. <laughs> what is it, like $6,000 starting? And to get a fully spec that one, I read around 35,000 is what they're expecting. 35,000! Like, I kind of want to play with one one day just to see how fast I could render out a YouTube video with it. But I know I'll never be able to afford that. So shout out to Asus for sending this PA90 over to me. Again, don't know much about the spec sheet, but when I show people, they're like, whoa, it has an NVIDIA Quadro P4000. I'm like, okay, don't know what that means. But one thing's for sure, the projects I've cut on here would have definitely choked and probably exploded my MacBook. Editing on this system did take a minute for me to readjust though, just because it's the first time I've been on a PC Windows machine for over a decade. Lots of things did come back to me very quickly and it is very familiar, but at the same time, it just feels like a newer, refreshed version of it. I'm also being reminded about how Windows comes with a bunch of random stuff pre-installed. Should I be concerned about this random icon? Is this a virus? Do I need an antivirus? Oh, solitaire, remember this? There's officially about two hours of me just playing solitaire now. So Sam, I apologize for all this useless raw footage. So mic drop. It's Sam's birthday today, by the way. So, you know, go tell him happy birthday. There's also a few extra steps on setting up the PC, like installing drivers and all that stuff, which I rarely have to do on a Mac. But once you have everything set up and you have your editing software installed, everything is just turbo boosted from this point on. One thing I did like about this PA90 is that it comes kind of pre-built because I'm not smart enough to custom build my own computer. Although I have always been a little bit jealous of people that do. It looks cool and they look really smart putting it together. And with those, it's so cool that you can always just keep upgrading as you go. So if you wanna increase a certain part of the computer, you can just swap out one piece opposed to going to the Apple store and going, hey, I wanna get a slightly faster graphics card. And they're like, well, you can buy this new computer. And since there's so many different companies making different hardware for Windows, it's always cool to see what kind of stuff that people come up with, like this Microsoft Surface. I mean, it's a laptop, but you could also release the screen into a tablet, oh, but it gets more power and performance if you stick it onto this keyboard. And once it's on there, it's like, I think magnets that hold it on really strong. And they're also saying that this hinge was like made from what they use in astronauts gloves or something. I so on paper, PCs just make so much more sense, right? And from across the board, more power, less price, more innovation, more cool stuff happening. And I was intending to make the full switch over to Windows, but I just can't give up my MacBook Pro. And I think the reason is because it's just so simple and it just works. And I think that is the one upside of Macs not being as flexible. I would say it's very, very frustration free and you're less likely to end up on the phone with technical support. I'm also an iPhone user. So of course I love AirDrop. Just if I take a little video, I could just boom, 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 boom to anyone else around that has a Mac. Also, I hate texting for some reason. All my friends will tell you how long it takes me to respond. But I'd say 90% of my text messages go out through my laptop, which is possible again through iMessage. Also, also just navigating on a Mac, it's nice that you could click on any video or photo or hit space bar and you could preview it. Technically, you can install an aftermarket plugin for a PC to do that, but it's just not nearly as fluid or as quick. So I don't really use it that much. So for me, I just love how Mac has all those little intricacies figured out. And of course, whenever I need that high performance, I go straight to this PA90. And I used to think that you had to be either 100% Mac or 100% PC. And sure, that might be ideal, but right now I'm using both depending on the project. And it's not terribly difficult to go back and forth between the two. Cause like I said, as soon as you get your editing software open, it's pretty much all the same. I'm still using my same monitor. This is the Asus PA32UC. Man, I'm good with these model numbers. I remember this stuff. I could use the same monitor. I could use the same keyboard. Ooh, the difference though is that control and the windows, all my shortcuts are kind of flipped like that whenever I switch between the two. So that confuses me a little bit, but it's, it's not a big deal. Anyways, let's go read some comments. So my last video was all about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. It's a $2,500 camera that shoots 6K raw. Wow, is it amazing? Does it suck? Watch the video to find out. Top comment was from Noah. Blackmagic just released a free plugin for Premiere. I just bought two licenses to use Blackmagic RAW files in Premiere. Of course, days after they would just come out with it for free. I uploaded an 8K so you can watch the upscaled 6K on YouTube. 
me watching in 480p. <laughs> Rendering out an 8K video and then uploading that, it just took so long. And when you first upload a video to YouTube, it doesn't give you all the resolutions all at once. It starts off with like 270p and 480p and then eventually gives you the HD options and then eventually gives you 4K. And I think I've been waiting for the 4K and 8K versions of that video to appear for like, I think almost 40 hours and it still hasn't shown up. It's, takes forever. But clearly it's not like it even matters. Like very few people are probably actually watching it in even 4K. When using a gimbal, even tying a shoe looks cool. It does with a little bit of movement and a somewhat shallow depth of feel, everything just nothing. You can film anything, it'll look cool. Dude, I love the way you always find a way to showcase your red camera, pure flex fam. <laughs> red camera, which, wh where, this one? Oh, this one. I didn't even know this was here. You don't need a gym membership when you can just vlog with that setup. That is true, you'll get some serious biceps vlogging on this thing. But I did just sign up for a gym membership yesterday. I am done being the kid from up. I'm gonna get ripped. And hopefully it won't be like last time where I bought like a two year membership and like stopped going after two months. Anyways, that's all I got for today's video. Don't forget to eat your vegetables and try not to be a piece of shit. Woo.